Okay, this is a 2008 BMW 528 XI, and it was towed to us last night. Now, the owner of the vehicle experienced a catastrophic coolant leak, and uh, wisely they immediately shut down and called the tow truck, which of course brought it to us. We don't believe there's any engine damage. Now, one of the things that's happening with the uh, plastic components here on many of the uh, both Europe uh, European, Japanese, and domestic vehicles is that what they did is they wanted to come up with a kind of a revolutionary style polymer here to make uh, uh, critical components of the engine out of. And sure enough, you'll notice that we have uh, intake manifolds and here, one company I had a chance to work for for a period of time was Alloy Polymers. And uh, one of the things that we did there was we compounded polymer. And what it came from us is a, uh, a neat resin that's a pure resin from Honeywell. And at that time, Honeywell version of Nylon 6, they called Capron. And it was uh, polymerized from their monomer called Caprolactam, and this is south of the city of Richmond, Virginia. Now, what we were doing with large twin screw extruders was compounding in glass fiber and carbon black. And what it was for was specifically for engine components, one of them being, of course, uh, like intake manifolds. So, good and solid. Here we see this oil filter cover. Good and solid, very elaborate shapes. Normally this material lasts very nicely, but one thing that was kind of uh, missed was that the formulations of antifreeze that they had chosen uh, act as a plasticizer and actually soften this polymer. And as it gets softened and deteriorates, obviously it's going to break. And there we see what happened. Here, this broke right off of this upper radiator hose. Now, quickly discharging the contents of the cooling system on the ground. Okay, here I see the replacement, and this is uh, manufactured by Gates. And sure enough, the polymer looks a little different than the original equipment, and hopefully they've corrected the problem. And so we're gonna go ahead and install this on this vehicle, and. Of course, this one did last for well over 100,000 miles, and this one hopefully will go the rest of the life of the vehicle. Now, on BMW, they like to use these wire retainers, and what you do is just simply pull the wire out and let it click, and then you can pull it off of the fitting, and the seal is actually an O-ring. And as you can see, I have the different types of wire retainers and O-rings. This one obviously is male, and these three are female. Now, the material that you see in there is just a little bit of silicone grease. Don't use a uh, um, hydrocarbon grease, but just use basically the silicone di dielectric grease that you'd use on an ignition system, and that works very nicely. It wouldn't absolutely be necessary, but we're doing that here. And there, as we look in the engine compartment, here we see the fitting up here at the top of the engine. This is going to be for the uh, section of the upper radiator hose that comes around to the radiator, drops down to a thermostatic valve that's part of the oil cooler, and then we come over here to the uh, uh, fitting there for the return from the heater hose. So there we go. All right, now to install this, what you do is you just simply come up against the fitting, make sure it's clean, and just simply give it a hard push. And so we'll go ahead and attempt to do that now. I'll go ahead and I've wiped every one of these off so it's absolutely dry. Got my silicone lubricant. Sometimes it's uh, hard to tell the best order to do this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for the small one down here in the engine compartment first. There's a lineup tab on it so it only, only can go on one way. So I'm gonna make sure that you find that and then you, press and slips right into position. I think it's going to be easier for me to uh, 
go ahead and go with the next one and again there's an alignment right here so there's only one way it goes on and if you have it correct it should just slide right on and here we go and we've got it got her lined up here okay here we've pushed all of our uh, various hoses into position and you want to make sure the wire goes cleanly down into the component part that's going to retain the fitting it's good and solid and it's a key so there's only one way that it lines up and you'll notice it does seem to be very close to the alternator here which got me worried a little but it does clear it and there it comes down to the what I believe is a type of thermostatic valve and here of course I'm coming to the upper fitting of the radiator so I actually have four connections here the return from the heater hose and coming down to the thermostat there for the one of the oil coolers and then up here at the connection at the engine all right now for our 2008 bmw we've chosen the xerox or the xerox i should say antifreeze this is an old timey company been around for a long time and as you can see, this is their recommended formulation for BMW. Now you'll notice when you go to the auto parts store, it seems like there's six or seven different Xerox formulations for everything from domestic, Asian, European, and even differences there between, let's say, Audi, Volkswagen, and BMW, Mercedes. Okay, now on the BMW 528XI, the uh, coolant and this is actually a pressure tank it's not just a reservoir this is an active part of the pressurized cooling system and this is actually my pressure cap there if it uh, exceeds the value printed on it which is, is actually two uh two bar two bar it's about, i believe that's what they're trying to tell me is that uh, it will open and allow coolant there to escape and there's the little drain port goes to the bottom of the bottle now, fortunately, this is good and high. It's higher than the water pump, which is actually an electric water pump, down in the lower section of the engine there on the right side, the passenger side. So, uh, actually, bleeding air from this system is really not a problem. Now, some other models of BMW, it is, and I actually have a vacuum filler, where I actually put a vacuum on the system and then draw the coolant in after the system's been evacuated but that's not going to be necessary here so we'll go ahead and uh, pour in our coolant start the engine and go ahead and uh, get it warmed up and make sure we have the proper amount of coolant in the vehicle okay so here we go we're going to carefully pour in our antifreeze this is already a 50 50 mixture if i had purchased pure antifreeze i'd either be following a gallon of antifreeze with a gallon of distilled water if you have a good water source, I guess you could use tap water, but here we go. And uh, swallowing up the first gallon pretty much without any trouble. And again, you know, purging air on this vehicle is not such a problem. Some vehicles, it is a problem. If you don't have your vacuum filler, you're in for a hard time. And oftentimes there is an air bleed as strategic points on cooling systems and uh, we don't have one here on this one because again we mentioned that the the actual we'll call it a reservoir bottle is higher much higher than the rest of the engine so i really don't have a tr trouble getting the air out of the system okay there's the first gallon okay here we are we're filling our pressure reservoir now, if you look down in the neck, you see the level float indicating that they have plenty of coolant. And there you see that stream coming from the air bleed line. Now, this line is actually going across the top of the radiator and goes to the very top of the radiator above the upper radiator hose fitting. Okay, here we see the air bleed line. And as we follow it, it actually runs here along the top of the radiator and actually 
goes into the radiator right here at the top. All right, here we see that air bleed line and it's coming right there to the top of the radiator. And there it has a little spring type clamp. And that's a nice feature. There it's constantly purging air from our system. Now we'll go ahead and finish filling it up and then do a quick pressure check and then make sure everything's okay and return it to the customer.